Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, in hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings, fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble, the beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink and vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse for one another, and royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bizda, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abagtha, Zethar, and Carcas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew the law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshina, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Merez, Marsina, and Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face, and which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti, according to the law, because she has not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? And Memukan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen have not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported. The king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree, which he shall make, shall be published throughout all the empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memukan. For he sent letters into all the king's providences, into every province according to the written thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. After these things, when the raft of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti, and what she had done, and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, let there be fair young virgins sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shishan, the palace, to the house of the women, and to the custody of Hegi, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them, and let the maiden which pleases the king be instead of Vashti, and the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shemai, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, 
who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, the king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace, to the custody of Hegai, that Esther was brought unto the king's house, to the custody of Hegai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him. And he speedily gave her her things for purification, with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens, which were meet to be given to her, out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maidens unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther had not shown her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Now when every maiden's turn was to come to go into King Ahasuerus, after that she had been twelve months according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purification accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odors, and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king, whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women, to the custody of Shaazgaz, the king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she was called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house, royal in the tenth month, which is the month of Tibet in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and all his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not yet shown her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her, for Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, the two of the king's chamberlains, Big then and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out, therefore, they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the chronicles before the king. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servant, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman, to see whether Mordecai's matter would stand. For he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did reverence him, then was Haman full of wrath, and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had shown him the people of Mordecai, Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is, the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast pure, that is, the lot, before Haman from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, 
There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all of the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it unto the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamathada, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people of every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, in the name of King Ahasuerus was it written, and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by post into all of the king's provinces, to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people, that they should be ready against that day. The post went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was perplexed. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry and came even before the king's gate. For none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it to her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai, and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then Esther called for Hatash, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend unto her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatash went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him a copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make requests before him for her people. And Hatash came and told Esther the words of Mordecai, and Esther spake unto Hatash, and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants, and the people of the king's provinces, do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king, and to the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his, to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house, more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer, Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way, and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now it came to pass on the third day, that Esther put on her royal apparel, and stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? 
And what is thy request? It shall be even given thee to the half of the kingdom. And Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day into the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther hath said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition, and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king hath said. Then Haman went forth that day, joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends, and Zeresh, his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches, and the multitude of his children, and all the things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, Moreover, Yea, as to the queen, did not let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself, and tomorrow I am invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh his wife, and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king, that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet, and the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Toresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on King Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to do honor more than to himself? And Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Let the royal apparel be brought which the king uses to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man withal whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him. Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Then said the king to Haman, Make haste, and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do so to Mordecai the Jew, that sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai, and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to his house mourning, and having his head covered. And Haman told Zeresh his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men, and Zeresh his wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but thou shalt surely fall before him. And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains, and hasted to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. What is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we have been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther, The queen, who is he, and where is he, that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, 
The adversary and the enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king arising from the banquet of wine and his wrath went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make requests for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine. And Haman was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Harbonah, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also, the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then said the king, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. On that day did king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews' enemy, unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spake yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite, and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king, and said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in thy sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman the son of Hamadatha the Agavite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him that have hanged upon the gallows, because he have laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month, that is, the month of Sivan, on the third and twentieth day thereof. And it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews, and to the lieutenants, and the deputies, and the rulers of the provinces, which are from India even unto Ethiopia. A hundred and twenty-seven provinces, unto every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language, and to the Jews according to their writing, and according to their language. And he wrote in the king Ahasuerus' name, and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by post on horseback, and riders on mules, camels, and young dromedaries, wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in the, every city, to gather themselves together, and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Upon one day in all the provinces of king Ahasuerus, namely upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar. The copy of the writing for commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people, and that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the posts that rode upon the mules and camels went out, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment, and the decree was given as she shined the palace. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal appearance of blue and white, and with great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness, and joy and honor. And in every province, and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Now in the twelfth month, that is, the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary that the Jews had ruled over them that hated them, the Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king of Hoseris, to lay hand on such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. And all the rulers of the provinces, and the lieutenants, and the deputies, and the officers of the king helped the Jews, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces. For this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, and slaughter, and destruction, and did what they would unto those that hated them. And in Shushan, the palace, the Jews 
slew and destroyed 500 men. And Parshadanta, and Dalphon, and Aspatha, and Paratha, and Adalia, and Aradatha, and Parmashta, and Arisai, and Aridai, and Vajazatha, the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, slew they, but on the spoil laid they not their hand. On that day the number of those that were slain and Shushan the palace was brought before the king. And the king said unto Esther the queen, The Jews have slain and destroyed five hundred men in Shushan the palace, and the ten sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is thy petition, and it shall be granted thee? Or what is thy request further, and it shall be done? Then said Esther, If it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews, which are in Shushan, to do tomorrow, according unto this day's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. And the king commanded it so to be done, and the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day also of the month of Adar, and slew three hundred men at Shushan, but on the prey they laid not their hand. But the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together, and stood for their lives, and had rest from their enemies, and slew of their foes seventy and five thousand, but they laid not their hands on the prey. The thirteenth day of the month of Adar, and on the fourteenth day of the same, rested they, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews that were at Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth day thereof, and on the fourteenth day, and on the fifteenth day of the same, they rested, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the fourteenth day of the month Adar, a day of gladness and feasting, and a good day, and of sending portions to one another. And Mordecai wrote these things, and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them, that they should keep the fourteenth day of the month Adar, and the fifteenth day of the same, yearly, as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month which was turned unto them, from sorrow to joy, and from mourning unto a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, and of sending portions one to another, and gifts to the poor. And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun, and as Mordecai had written unto them, because Haman the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them, and cast pure that is, the lot, to consume them and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. Wherefore they call these days Purim, after the name of Pure. Therefore, for all the words of this letter, and all that which they had seen concerning this matter, and which had come unto them, the Jews ordained, and took upon them, and upon their seed, and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail, that they would keep these two days according to their writing, and according to their appointed time every year, and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city, and that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abihel, and Mordecai the Jew wrote with all authority to confirm this second letter of Purim. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews, to the hundred twenty and seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, with words of peace and truth, to confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed, according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them. And as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed the matter of the fastings and their cry. And the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book, and the king Ahasuerus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea, and all the acts of his power and of his might, and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, whereunto the king advanced him. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was next unto king Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed. Now reading from the Apocrypha. The rest of the chapters of the book of Esther, which are found neither in the Hebrew nor in the Chaldee. Part of the 10th chapter after the Greek. Then Mardokia said, Yah have done these things. For I remember a dream which I saw concerning these matters, and nothing thereof have failed. A little fountain became a river, and there was light, and the sun, and much water. This river is Esther, whom the king married and made queen. And the two dragons are I and Amon. 
and the nations were those that were assembled to destroy the name of the Jews. And my nation is this Israel, which cried to Yah and were saved for the most high have saved his people for the most high have delivered us from all those evils. And Yah have wrought signs and great wonders, which have not been done among the Gentiles. Therefore have he made two lots, one for the people of Yah and another for all the Gentiles. And these two lots came at the hour and time and day of judgment before Yah among all nations. So Yah remembered his people and justified his inheritance. Therefore those days shall be unto them in the month of Adar, the fourteenth and fifteenth day of the same month, with an assembly and joy and with gladness before Yah, according to the generations forever among his people. In the fourth year of the reign of Ptolemaeus and Cleopatra, Dositheus, who said he was a priest and Levite, and Ptolemaeus, his son, brought this epistle of Furum, which they said was the same, and that Lysimachus, the son of Ptolemaeus, that was in Jerusalem, had interpreted. In the second year of the reign of Artaxerxes, the great, in the first day of the month Nisan, Mardochius, the son of Jairus, the son of Semai, the son of Sisai, of the tribe of Benjamin, had a dream, who was a Jew and dwelt in the city of Susa, a great man, being a servitor in the king's court. He was also one of the captives which Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon carried from Jerusalem with Jeconiah's king of Judea, and this was his dream. Behold, a noise of tumult, with thunder and earthquakes and uproar in the land, and behold, two great dragons came forth, ready to fight, and their cry was great. And at their cry, all nations were prepared to battle, that they may fight against the righteous people. And lo, a day of darkness and obscurity, tribulation and anguish, affliction and great uproar upon the earth. And the whole righteous nation was troubled, fearing their own evils, and were ready to perish. Then they cried unto Yah, and upon their cry, as it were from a little fountain, was made a great flood, even much water. The light of the sun rose up, and the lowly were exalted, and devoured the glorious. Now when Mardochias, who had seen this dream, and what Yah had determined to do, was awake, he bare this dream in mind, and until night by all means was desirous to know it. And Mardochias took his rest in the court with Gabatha and Thara, the two eunuchs of the king, and keepers of the palace. And he heard their devices, and searched out their purposes, and learned that they were about to lay hands upon Artaxerxes the king. And so he certified the king of them. Then the king examined the two eunuchs, and after that they had confessed it, they were strangled. And the king made a record of these things, and Mardochias also wrote thereof. So the king commanded Mardochias to serve in the court, and for this he rewarded him. Howbeit Ammon, the son of Amadathus, the Agagite, who was in great honor with the king, sought to molest Mardochias and his people because of the two eunuchs of the king. The copy of the letters was this. The great king Artaxerxes writeth these things to the princes and governors that are under him from India unto Ethiopia, and in hundred and seven and twenty provinces. After that I became lord over many nations, and had dominion over the whole world, not lifted up with presumption of my authority, but carrying myself always with equity and mildness. I proposed to settle my subjects continually in a quiet life, and making my kingdom peaceable and open for passage to the utmost coast, to renew peace, which is desired of all men. Now when I asked my counselors how this might be brought to pass, Amon, that excelled in wisdom among us, and was approved for his constant good will and steadfast fidelity, and had the honor of the second place in the kingdom, declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations, and continually despised the commandments of kings, so as the uniting of our kingdoms, honorably intended by us, cannot go forward. Seeing then we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men, differing in the strange manner of their laws, and evil affected to our state, working all the mischief they can, that our kingdom may not be firmly established. Therefore we have commanded that all they that are signified in writing unto you by Amon, who is ordained over the affairs, and is next unto us, shall all, with their wives and children, be utterly destroyed by the sword of their enemies, without all mercy and pity, the fourteenth day of the twelfth month Adar of this present year, that they who of old and now also are malicious may in one day with violence go into the grave and so ever hereafter cause our affairs to be settled and without trouble. Then Mardochias thought upon all the works of the Most High and made his prayer unto him, saying, O Yahweh, Master, the King Almighty, 
for the whole world is in thy power. And if thou hast appointed to save Israel, there is no man that can gainsay thee. For thou hast made heaven and earth, and all the wondrous things under the heaven. Thou art master of all things, and there is no man that can resist thee, which art the Most High. Thou knowest all things, and thou knowest, Master, that it was neither in contempt nor pride, nor for any desire of glory, that I did not bow down to proud Ammon. For I could have been content with a good will for the salvation of Israel to kiss the soles of his feet. But I did this, that I might not prefer the glory of man above the glory of Yah. Neither will I worship any but thee, O Yahweh, neither will I do it in pride. And now, O Most High, Yahweh and King, spare thy people, for their eyes are upon us to bring us to naught. Yea, they desire to destroy the inheritance that has been thine from the beginning. Despise not the portion which thou hast delivered out of Egypt for thy own self. Hear my prayer, and be merciful unto thine inheritance. Turn our sorrow into joy, that we may live, O Most High, and praise thy name. And destroy not the mouths of them that praise thee, O Yahweh. All Yisrael in like manner cried most earnestly unto the Most High, because their death was before their eyes. Queen Esther also, being in fear of death, resorted unto the Most High, and laid away her glorious apparel, and put on the garments of anguish and mourning. And instead of precious ointments, she covered her head with ashes and dung, and she humbled her body greatly. In all the places of her joy she filled with her torn hair. And she prayed unto the Most High, God of Israel, saying, O my Yahweh, thou only art our king. Help me, desolate woman, which have no helper but thee, for my danger is in my hand. From my youth up I have heard in the tribe of my family that thou, O Most High, tookest Israel from among all people, and our fathers from all their predecessors for a perpetual inheritance, and thou hast performed whatsoever thou didst promise them. And now we have sinned before thee, therefore hast thou given us into the hands of our enemies, because we worship their gods, O Most High, thou art righteous. Nevertheless, it satisfied them not that we are in bitter captivity, but they have stricken hands with their idols, that they will abolish the thing that thou with thy mouth has ordained, and destroy thine inheritance, and stop the mouth of them that praise thee, and quench the glory of thy house, and of thine altar, and open the mouths of the heathen to set forth the praises of the idols, and to magnify a fleshy king forever. O Most High, give not thy scepter unto them that be nothing, and let them not laugh at our fall. But turn their device upon themselves, and make him an example that have begun this against us. Remember, O Most High, make thyself known in time of our affliction, and give me boldness, O King of the nations, and Creator and Master of all power. Give me eloquent speech in my mouth before the lion. Turn his heart to hate him that fighteth against us, that there may be an end of him, and of all that are like-minded to him. But deliver us with thine hand, and help me that am desolate, and which have no other helper but thee. Thou knowest all things, O Most High. Thou knowest that I hate the glory of the unrighteous, and abhor the bed of the uncircumcised, and of all the heathen. Thou knowest my necessity, for I abhor the sign of my high estate, which is upon mine head in the days wherein I show myself, and that I abhor it as a mistress rag, and that I wear it not when I am private by myself, and that thine handmaid have not eaten at Ammon's table, and that I have not greatly esteemed the king's feast, nor drunk the wine of the drink offerings. Neither had thine hand made it any joy since the day that I was brought hither to this present. But in thee, O Yahweh, God of Abraham, O thou mighty God above all, hear the voice of the forlorn, and deliver us out of the hands of the mischievous, and deliver me out of my fear. And upon the third day, when she had ended her prayer, she laid away her mourning garments and put on her glorious apparel. And being glorious adorned, after she called upon Yahweh, who is the beholder and savior of all things, she took two maids with her, and upon the one she leaned as carrying herself daintily, and the other followed, bearing up her train. And she was ruddy through the perfection of her beauty, and her countenance was cheerful and very amiable, but her heart was in anguish for fear. Then having passed through all the doors, she stood before the king who sat upon his royal throne and was clothed with all his robes of majesty, all glittering with gold and precious stones, and he was very dreadful. Then lifting up his countenance that shone with majesty, he looked very fiercely upon her, and the queen fell down and was pale and fainted and bowed herself upon the head of the maid that went before her.
Then Yah changed the spirit of the king into mildness, who in a fear leaped from his throne and took her in his arms, till she came to herself again and comforted her with loving words and said unto her, Esther, what is the matter? I am thy brother. Be of good cheer. Thou shalt not die, though our commandment be general. Come near. And so he held up his golden scepter and laid it upon her neck and embraced her and said, Speak unto me. Then said she unto him, I saw thee, my Lord, as an angel of God, and my heart was troubled for fear of thy majesty. For wonderful art thou, Lord, and thy countenance is full of grace. And as she was speaking, she fell down for faintness. Then the king was troubled, and all his servants comforted her. The great king Artaxerxes unto the princes and governors of a hundred and seven and twenty provinces from India unto Ethiopia, and unto all our faithful subjects, greeting. Many, the more often they are honored with the great bounty of their gracious princes, the more proud they are waxen. And endeavor to hurt not our subjects only, but not being able to bear abundance, do take in hand to practice also against those that do them good. And take not only thankfulness away from among men, but also lift it up with the glorious words of lewd persons that were never good. They think to escape the justice of Yah, that see of all things and hate of evil. Oftentimes also fair speech of those that are put in trust to manage their friends' affairs have caused many that are in authority to be partakers of innocent blood and have enwrapped them in remediless calamities. Beguiling with the falsehood and deceit of their lewd disposition, the innocency and goodness of princes. Now ye may see this as we have declared, not so much by ancient histories as ye may, if ye search what have been wickedly done of late through the pestilent behavior of them that are unworthily placed in our authority. And we must take care for the time to come that our kingdom may be quiet and peaceable for all men, both by changing our purposes and always judging things that are evident with more equal proceeding. For Amman, a Macedonian, the son of Amadatha, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood and far distant from our goodness, and as a stranger recede of us, have so far forth obtained the favor that we show toward every nation as that he was called our father and was continually honored of all as the next person unto the king. But he, not bearing his great dignity, went about to deprive us of our kingdom and life, having by manifold and cunning deceit sought of us the destruction as well of Mardochius, who saved our life and continually procured our good, as also of blameless Esther, partaker of our kingdom, with their whole nation. For by these means he thought, finding us destitute of friends, to have translated the kingdom of the Persians to the Macedonians. But we find that the Jews, whom this wicked wretch have delivered to utter destruction, are no evildoers, but live by most just laws, and that they be the children of the Most High and most mightily living God, who have ordered the kingdom both unto us and to our progenitors in the most excellent manner. Wherefore, ye shall do well not to put in execution the letters sent unto you by Ammon, the son of Amadatha. For he that was the worker of these things is hanged at the gates of Susa with all his family. Yah, who ruleth all things, speedily rendering vengeance to him according to his deserts. Therefore, ye shall publish the copy of this letter in all places, that the Jews may freely live after their own laws. And ye shall aid them that even the same day, being the thirteenth day of the twelfth month Adar, they may be avenged on them, who and the time of their affliction shall set upon them. For Almighty Yah have turned to joy unto them the day wherein the chosen people should have perished. Ye shall therefore among your solemn feasts keep it in high day with all feasting, that both now and hereafter there may be safety to us and the well-affected Persians, but to those which do conspire against us a memorial of destruction. Therefore, every city and country whatsoever, which shall not do according to these things, shall be destroyed without mercy, with fire and sword, and shall be made not only unpassable for men, but also most hateful to wild beasts and fowls forever. Mm -hmm.